You're good to go? Excellent. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Talk to Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle C. Baker. And before I introduce you to our amazing guest today, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to whichever channel you're listening to or watching from. So today, as you all know, I always see this. I have an amazing guest, and I'm really excited to introduce you to, to this uh, particular guest because um, I just, I love the way she presents herself. I love her content. I love everything that she talks about because she just puts it out there. No sugar coating. It's it's all there it is. We need to talk about this. And that's all I'm about as well. So I, I definitely wanted to to have her on and I'm excited that she accepted to come on and, and share some of her wisdom. So I will introduce you today to Rosaline Batul. And thank you again, Rosaline, for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much, Danielle. Thank you so much for inviting me. I feel so honored to be on this podcast with you. So I'm Rosalie Mutu, and I help female alpha CEOs, alpha entrepreneurs cultivate their feminine orgasmic energy by um, playing more, by living in purpose and living in their pleasure. So I'm so happy to be here today, Danielle. Oh, that's amazing. And I love that because that's a topic that I'm really interested in and uh, we'll, we'll elaborate a little bit more. But yeah, for, for women in, in any kind of business, we tend to take uh, the, the male energy, uh, you know, that approach of the hustle and let's go, go, go. But we are very different uh, beings. So it is important to keep our, our divine feminine alive. And that's that's what you're all about. And I love that. It could, before we get started with, with the work that you do, can you tell us a little bit about your story and how you got to where you are today yeah sure so um I've always done coaching so I was an anti-bullying counselor when I was in high school when I was 11 I was coaching young kids on how to like, overcome bullying and like just you know giving them some like you know um advice and you know making sure that they feel good about themselves and then I when I was 15 I learned hypnotherapy but I didn't know it was called hypnotherapy then I just something that my mom gave me and um, she gave me a book called the magic of thinking big and in that book he talks about hypnosis so it's about mm. talking better to yourself learning to cultivate your mindset so I was learning that from the age of 15 to 16 and then fast forward um to 2017 like obviously I forgot all about coaching and hypnotherapy you know I was a rebellious teenager I went through my rebellious stage um I finished um, my law degree and then I decided to become a teacher so I was abroad teaching um English and then my mom passed away in 2017 and it was then that I realized that she had died with all her dreams so from for my mom she was a big dreamer she used to dream about having her own business she used to dream about helping people she used to always have like this kind of urge to help so I realized in that moment that she just died with all of her dreams inside of her but she passed on this wisdom to me of how to remain positive in your mindset how to call cultivate your feminine energy and how to just you know have be make better decisions in life so um when I came back to the UK I was pregnant with my third child and I was going through a divorce as well so in that moment I was just like oh my god this couldn't be it couldn't get any worse my mom's died I'm heavily pregnant I'm going through a divorce and I was facing homelessness as well because I couldn't figure out um the rent I couldn't figure out where to live so I just remember praying one night and saying you know what god I don't know what to do I'm in this rut. And I remember hearing something saying, just one more day, Rosie, just one more day. Just hold on for one more day. And that day came. Like, oh, praise to God, that day has come. I decided to go into coaching. I decided to learn more about hypnotherapy. And um, I decided to like just go all in with my business. And I did it from a place of love, not from a place of hustle. Even though I was in a situation where I was homeless, even though I was in a situation where I needed money, I never did it for money. I did it for love. And now I stand with a multi six figure business. I'm married to my forever husband. We have five children. Um, I have two more children with him, five children all together. And we live by the beach in Gambia. And I'm really living my best life in my femininity. I love it here. <laughs> that is such an amazing story. Oh, wow. I, I was just, I got goosebumps just listening to it. And that oh. I'm going to live by that one more day. And just give it one more day. I'm actually going to live by that. You kind of answered that. Your story kind of answers the question that I had for you. But is there a defining moment when you personally realized that, that when you started your business, that the, uh, the hustle, uh, that energy coming in wasn't going to work for you at all? Oh, yes, definitely. So I remember I remember I had this. So my kids, they were very young at that time. So I think my obviously I had a baby. 
three. And then my youngest, my other youngest was two years old. And then I had my six year old boy. So I remember putting them to bed at 7 p.m. I'm like, guys, you can go play in the bedroom. I'm going to go work. But then it was just that I remember feeling so restricted. I was like, why am I doing this to myself? Why am I forcing myself into the structure that doesn't fit with me? Because me, I'm the type of person I like to play a lot. I'm very creative. I like to give myself time before I work. And I used to think this was really bad. I used to believe I was unproductive. So I would say to myself, no, I'm going to reward myself with like maybe a hot chocolate after I work. And it never works for me. It never works for me. I have to give myself the hot chocolate first. And then I'm going to go work. <laughs> God, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not rewarding myself with hot chocolate. You can never make me reward myself with anything. Like I am the prize. I had to train my mind to make myself believe I'm the prize. I'm valuable. I'm worthy. And if I don't feel good in myself, I'm not going to create great work. So I have to make myself feel good, make my feel, myself feel valuable. And that's what's going to create this amazing business. Mm-hmm. I love that. I, I love it. I can listen to you already. I can just listen to you all day. It's like, I love this. I love it. I'm the prize. <laughs> no, I'm the prize. Is not the prize. I'm the prize. <laughs> I love it. And it's just that little switch that, that you need. And, and everybody's different. So they have their own switch. But just that fact to say, why am I doing it this way? Because everybody else, or I'm expected to do it that way. So I think that's incredible. Start with hot chocolate. You're the prize. <laughs> Uh, now what advice would you give uh to women who are either starting their business or they're at the breaking point in their business where they're thinking there's got to be something better I, i don't enjoy myself anymore um what advice would you give them to be able to lead a successful business or a successful life while keeping the sacred feminine intact or you know incorporating it into their their routine or their schedules oh i love that was such a good question so i think all of us have forgotten how to play And this is what happens when we're so masculine. As as women, we're naturally creative. Like when you look at feminine energy, you have three kinds of energies within it. Sexual energy, creative energy, and intuitive energy. So it's like feminine energy is wild. It's unhinged. It's um, elegant. It's soft. It's nurturing. It's caring. it's, It's so many different. It's fierce. It's powerful. So you have so many energies within you that requires you to play so that you can bring all of that out of you. So what I like to um, say is have a pleasure plan. So a pleasure plan is three things that will really help you feel like you've given yourself what you need to help you get through the day. So for me, it's playing with my kids. I have five children. I love playing with them. They, they know how to have fun. You just, you just give them one Give them like something to do and they will make it fun. Like they could make string fun. It's just so amazing to be around them. So get childlike. Um, if you don't have kids, like get childlike, go to the playground. And you will find when you're in the playground and you're like, oh my God, this is so stupid. This is so <laughs> icky. This is so weird. That means yeah. so Oh, you have to be in your masculine energy. I want you to go to the playground, sit on the swings or go down the slide and feel yourself having fun, okay? So you can put in a pleasure plan, hot chocolate. I'm playing with my kids. Me, I personally, I love to like get dressed up. Like I wear makeup, I wear red lipstick, get my I do my hair, I wear my bodycon dresses. I make sure I feel sexy in the day. Like I give myself an hour mm. in the morning, have a shower, do my hair, wear my makeup, wear my dresses, and just feel so sexy. That's what makes me feel alive and well and in my feminine energy. So number one thing is get playful. If you if you don't know how to, if you don't know what to, like turns you on in that orgasmic way, then go to the playground have some fun and the ideals will come to your mind because you're letting go of structure. You're letting yourself flow and your feminine energy will just come out and be like, oh yeah, next time I can do this and next time I can do that or this feels like fun and you're going to start getting ideas. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you need to keep that inner child alive and and I find that as the same as I think that's why I gravitated to working with children because that was my way to say, you know, I, I would grow up so structured and so, no, you know, do the work and then play. So that uh, if I got to play with children all day, that that was good enough for me. Oh, I would keep oh my gosh, right? You can't be, I love you can't be more in the wow. present than when you're in a room with 24 three-year-olds. You know, you're definitely oh, in wow. the present. So. I, I once I, I moved away from that I started realizing that I was going back to the old ways so that that was one of the questions that I wanted to talk to you because as women we are taught to give up who we are 
to be able mm -hmm. to have success. We are taught, you know, there's, that we need to act this way if we want to lead a business. There's that stigma still. Um, so what would you, what would you um, suggest or recommend to help us kind of deprogram what we were taught so that we don't go back to those old ways once we, because when we start, it's all exciting, but then we, we find ourselves going back to the old, the old way. But what would be your advice on that? Or what would you recommend that we do? Yeah, so when you find yourself hustling or you find yourself trying to like achieve more and you don't feel fulfilled, it's because you're not you're not giving yourself something. There's a, a need that you're not giving yourself. And usually it's just attention. So what it is, um, when you have grown up in a masculine structure, like we've all been through school, we've all been programmed that a good worker or a successful person is on time and you know makes money and is just structured. But as a feminine woman, you are a magnet for miracles, literally. I say this to all my clients. My husband has to go out and work hard. If he's not working hard, he will feel depressed. A woman, when she works hard, she gets depressed, right? She's working right. hard. Our we we feel alive when we don't have structure, when we have that a bit that we have that space to flow, when we have that space to explore and be in our imagination and get creative. So when you feel like you're you're going down this way towards burnout, bring it back and ask yourself what do I need? And you're probably trying to get a validation or you're probably trying to prove yourself. You're trying to prove that you can be rich. You're trying to prove that you can make it. You're trying to prove that you can be successful. And if you're doing that it's because you're not giving yourself love you've taught yourself that if I earn more if I do more then I'll be more lovable <clears throat> and that's not how it works you are born lovable you were born worthy you were born with all their beliefs that will help you live an abundant life it's about going back to that by asking yourself what do I need and usually what it looks like is this let's say for example you're working really hard you're getting frustrated Maybe the clients are not coming in. Maybe you're not making the money you want. Maybe your business is not as successful as you thought it would have been six months, a year in. What you're going to do in that moment is say, you know what, I'm going to step away from work and I'm going to give myself what I need. If that looks like going to bed, going to sleep, that looks like crying, because another thing that us women have been taught that crying is bad, but our first yeah. language was to cry. Our first language was, I'm going to cry and my parents are going to give me what I need. So in that moment that you're feeling frustrated and overwhelmed, you have to take a step away from your business and get creative. And the way you get creative, say, you know what, what do I need right now? Oh, I need a hug. <laughs> oh, I need some love. Oh, I need to call up my girlfriends and hang out with them. Oh, I need to go to that shop and get a hot chocolate. Oh, I need to go to that bookstore and read a book. I just need to be away in a different energy so that I can open up my mind to more abundance. And usually it always works. That is incredible. That's everything that you just says, like you put a big mirror right in front of me and be like this wake up call. No, you're absolutely right. And for any men who are listening right now, it's a very valid point is that if men don't feel like they're structured and on track and hustling, they go depressed. Women is the opposite. And that is true. I've lived it myself. When we don't have that outlet for creativity or to be ourselves that's where you hit the that that deep hole so for supportive men out there who want to help their 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 partner keep that in mind that it's the opposite of what you need <laughs> that she needs yeah. so I just absolutely love it thank you and uh, go for that hot chocolate girl <laughs> we, can, yeah, we all, we all need coffee. to go for it I'm a coffee I'm a coffee person but then now I want the hot chocolate <laughs> Oh my God. I love it. I love my hot chocolate. <laughs> uh, yes, I love it. And then, and then there's nothing more, of, you know, it's a treat for children. Like if you want to play and be creative and be childlike, this is definitely the drink for you. Right. I love it. Yeah. You mentioned that that's one of the first things that you, you talk about with your clients. Can you share with us a little bit of the, uh, the transformations that you've seen with the people that you work with? Oh gosh, there are so many. I want to give you so much, Lisa. So there's, uh, there's an alpha, there's an alpha woman. She's so successful. She's running a business. I mean, she was hitting millions, and but she was so burnt out, and she was actually going through IVF for three years. And um, after working with me for I think it was three sessions we had, or she was in a in my coaching program for thirty days. Um, we we purged so much shame that was in her in her womb around not being good enough because she felt like no matter how much she achieved it was never enough like she didn't know what enough felt like so we purged the shame in her womb and then like oh praise to god a few months later she found out she was pregnant which oh, i was wow. just like three years of infertility ibs 
And three months later, she was pregnant. Now she had a baby, full term, uh, natural as well. She was so afraid of having like a, a terrible birth, but she had it naturally. She was so happy. And I've had this with a few other clients as well. I had another client who was in the corporate world and she was working so hard in corporate. Her adrenals were out of whack. She had adrenal fatigue. Um, she had... Um, cysts on her ovaries she has so much so many menstrual um health problems then after working with me i think it was for two three months and um, she also fell pregnant and she had a baby oh no sorry she got married first she she found mm-hmm. her soulmate and then a few months later got pregnant and then she had her baby as well um another lady that i want to talk about she had um and i find all my clients have um women health problems like in their womb they have all they have infertility menstrual cycles out of whack they have adrenal uh, fatigue they have endometriosis i couldn't pronounce endometriosis i couldn't pronounce so when you have uh, fibroids in your womb they have all these problems you know why because they're hustling they are hustling trying to prove their worth and so i want this is the 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 point i want to make you have a womb you're worthy enough you have a womb that supports life that makes you worthy. And in our in our religion, in Islam, we are taught that when a woman is pregnant, the angel comes to her womb and breathes the life in her womb. So your womb is touched by an angel when you're pregnant. That mm. I want I want you to realize just how powerful you are. You support life. And the fact that you support life makes you a magnet. You don't have to hustle to, to make money. You don't have to grind. You don't have to burn out. All you have to do is lean back in your femininity, respond to life get into flow, get creative, get imaginative, because you're very good at it, get childlike. And the more you become that, the more you feel that way, I promise you, like I've seen in my life, I promise you, you will attract all things of abundance. You will be more richer, more healthier, feeling more sexier, find your soulmate, get married, have a have your family, <laughs> have your dog, have your, <laughs> barefoot and pregnant, living on your farm, like you're going to live your best life, but you just have to be in your feminine energy. And this is what I do with my clients. When you purge that shame in the womb and you rewire right. your subconscious mind around hustling and success, that's really like just, the, that's really the breaking point for my clients that they end up becoming their feminine selves and embody their true selves. Oh, that's wonderful. That's good. And I invite everybody to rewind and re-listen to this part because it is so vital. Uh, and I've seen it as well with my clients, uh, that, that, that womb, wound, uh, that wounded yeah. womb. Uh, and uh, it, it, even if you're not planning on having children, because uh, we talked about how, you know, it's just naturally all of a sudden they, they are able to, uh, to have a baby, but uh, it, it just, it is at the root of everything. And um, I love how you said that it's, it's because of the hustle that you start getting all of these issues. And it, you, you look at so many other literature and it, it all comes down to the same thing. You, you know, and we can sustain life. That's more than enough for everybody. Okay. You don't need. To, you don't need to justify yourself. You don't need to prove yourself. You're just being you is more than enough. Okay. Uh, I love that. Again, I could talk. I could talk to you all day about this, but right. um, I w- I wanted to get your take on this because uh, people who are listening, and I've lived this personally a few years back when I was at my rock bottom, and it was. I was at the point where I didn't even know what brought me joy, what made me happy. I didn't even know if I liked hot chocolate anymore. You know, <laughs> like I was at that point. Yeah. So what what advice would you give women who who really do want to bring back that sacred feminine in them? Uh, but there's something that they could do today or tomorrow just to, to really start stirring that up and see what it looks like for them uh, so that they can actually start working on it. Yeah, so I want to do, I want to get barefoot. If you have a garden, you have a garden that'd be great if you don't go to the park get barefoot get in the grass Mm -hmm. as a feminine woman you are connected to nature more than the man and this is what makes us like i'm sorry to brag but us feminine women are so powerful sorry to the men but you guys have to hustle we don't okay we get we get things coming so easily you guys have to work hard and that's your that's your business like i love that for you but for me being in nature, being connected to the earth is what's going to bring back your, it's going to, um, scientific studies have shown that it decompresses your um, nervous system, it regulates your nervous system, it helps electricity flow through your body because we're electrical beings, we have um, energy flowing through our body, it helps us connect to ourselves and for some scientists say it releases trauma too because when you when you touch the your foot to the earth, you are taking in all the nutrients, you're taking in all that energy and think about it. Trees are like wonderful. You, they don't need you to grow. 
they're just there like do, do you ever wonder how tree grew grew that strong and big no it's just there that's that's powerful energy and as women we have that ability to soak in all that energy and turn into something creative turn into something playful and it doesn't have to be creative to achieve something when I say creative I mean in the sense of what can what can you do that's going to make you feel more childlike so creativity is linked to childlike behavior you know how you work with three-year-olds you see how creative they are how childlike they play just color all day long they color on the walls they don't care like in their minds yeah they just like oh my god the world is amazing I'm so free this is what yeah. it does. When you get vulnerable in nature, you walk in the grass, you walk in the soil, it helps you cultivate your creative nature and helps you cultivate your feminine energy. So that would be my number one thing. The second one would be the pleasure plan and figuring out what mm-hmm. turns you on, what makes you feel playful, what makes you feel creative. Just like I was saying, hot chocolate for me. <laughs> like, I have to have a hot chocolate. <laughs> I don't care how much it costs. I will never pinch pennies and try and save on hot chocolate. I will always buy hot chocolate. So figure out what helps you stay childlike as well that's great and there's it's the possibilities are endless there there's there's no it's not that one thing you need to do to be able to be happy it's whatever works for you and that may change as well later in later on you might find you're gravitating towards something else so I think that's wonderful oh I love it yeah (laughs) now how do because you're a busy woman how do you balance everything work home life everything that life throws at you what uh what works for you so i I, my my intention has always been to hire as much support and i think this is what a lot of us uh, women we struggle with as um when we're in our wounded feminine, we don't like asking for help. We think it's a sign of weakness. We say to ourselves, oh my God, like, let me be the mother. Let me just take everything on. Let me just carry all the weight on my shoulders. But that doesn't help you. So very early on in my business, I hired a VA. I made sure I've always had support. So I have a VA who just posts my content. All I do is create. I have um, a nanny at home. Um, I have a chef. I have a private driver. I have so many people who support me I know what I do I hold the intention that whatever money I make I'm going to pay people I'm going to make other people rich too I'm going to help them get better in their lives too like I don't want to take all the money for myself I want people to be richer than me so the people that I pay I pay them really well like I pay them 10 times their wage normally like the wage that they get is amazing and for me it feels good to do that because I want to support people this is feminine energy so yeah. that's been my number one thing always asking for help even for my husband like if if I feel like I'm getting stressed out like babe you know I need some help can you help me and men love problem solving so when I come to him with a problem he's always solving it for me so I'm I'm I I made it a thing for me to like, okay, if I'm struggling, I'm not going to struggle alone. I'm going to ask for help. I'm going to ask someone. I'm going to ask my coach. Oh yeah, another thing, I invest in coaches, 100%. I have to invest in coaches because, you know, as women, we get stuck in our feelings. And sometimes, even though you're the best at what you do, sometimes you need that outer perspective to hold up the space for you, for you to express yourself. So I always invest in coaches. I make sure I have the best coaches, like on my side, mindset coaches, business coaches, spiritual coaches too. Um, But yeah, I think the main thing is having a support system. That's very important that is amazing you're just giving us goal all the way through today we're just asking help alone is something that we're almost afraid to do it's it's seen as a weakness almost for women and uh asking your man for help is even that's because I that's how I grew up you don't need a man to live you don't need you know a man to support you so asking a partner for help was definitely not an option for me and then that has a strain on the relationship as well so uh I love that and the fact and you brought another good point is there's that stick of of wealth where um it's almost seen as a bad thing if you do accumulate wealth but the fact that you are helping other people get wealthy that's what you have to look at you're multiplying it and that's just a beautiful gift i love that oh (laughs) i can can talk to you i can can keep going i can keep going but i love what you're saying and again i invite everybody to re-listen to this to make sure that these messages stick because it's important for everybody to hear it um hi wondering anything new that you're working on right now what are you currently working on or or building up to at this point 
Okay, so right now what I'm working on is I'm I'm relaunching my um, eight week program, Sacred Feminine Pleasure. It's all for alpha women, CEO, female entrepreneurs. Even if you're not an entrepreneur, you're not a businesswoman, but you know you're in your masculinity and you want to learn how to cultivate your feminine energy. So it's an eight week program where we rewire and heal your abundance wounds around eight areas of life, and. The reason why I've probably been in other healing programs and it hasn't worked is because you haven't gone through these eight areas. So it's money, love, success, confidence, authenticity, feminine energy, intuition, God, faith, religious trauma, and then sexual energy and health. So when you go through these, when you heal your um, your abundance wounds and you rewire your subconscious mind around all these areas of life, I'm telling you, you're going to have lifelong transformation. Like I still have ladies who joined the first round last year. They are still getting transformations. Like they're saying that it keeps coming. I, I keep healing. I haven't gone back to my old ways. I haven't gone back to my masculinity. I haven't gone back to feeling depressed. I haven't gone back to feeling anxious because they've been able to get to the root cause. And the root cause is always like, you're not standing in your truth. When you stand in your truth, you stand in your confidence, you know who you are, everything else will fall into place. You'll make more money, you'll get richer, you'll get healthier, you'll feel sexier, you'll feel more um, stronger emotionally, spiritually, when you become truthful in who you are. And, and what I mean by that is confronting yourself, learning how to confront yourself and hold yourself accountable, which is true feminine energy. Like, I know like we like talking about the soft stuff, like, you know, um, you know the stuff that makes us feel great, but also feminine energy is learning to go within and say, you know what, what, what can I improve here? Where can I hold myself accountable? Where can I respond better? How can I, you know, hold myself um, responsible for this feeling? You know, what can I do with this emotion? Because usually what we do is we react. And when you're in your masculinity for so long, you can get triggered over everything. I know, because I used to be this way. I know a lot of my clients, when they're in their masculinity, you get triggered by, you know, like posts about sex, posts about being orgasmic, posts about getting married, having children. It can trigger you, of course. But this is what yeah. we explore is the feminine pleasure, help you explore that possibility that you are a multi-dimensional being having a human experience and you get to explore all parts of yourself. That is incredible. That is a wonderful program. Yeah, before I... Uh... I ask you how people can sign up or how they can they can get in touch with you. I want to ask this one last question, and I am gonna love. I know I'm gonna love your answer because you, you absolutely <laughs> get it. But I'll give you a bit of a background. I haven't explained it to you. There was a little girl a few years back who interview, was interviewing adults for a school project, and she was asking them what every adult asks a child. Uh, she was asking this one question, and nobody would answer her. They say, "Well, you know." They, she would get so frustrated because she wasn't getting an answer and her mother just said you know stop asking <laughs> it's that simple and the girl didn't want to she said no somebody's gonna get it and when she interviewed me I answered right away so she she was all happy she told her mom you see I told you somebody would get it so I made her a promise <laughs> made her a promise that I would ask everybody I interview uh that same question <laughs> and and that question and I'm gonna I can't wait to hear your answers <laughs> what do you want what do you want to be when you grow up Oh, okay. I'm gonna give you a hint. I want to. I want to be a great grandma. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love that. I can just imagine. Like this is my dream. I want to be on a private island, have my private jet, and have all my great grandchildren around me. Like I just want to be a. Gra I want to have. I want to pass down that wisdom, that ancestral wisdom, to my great grandchildren. Like I want to be alive that long, to just yeah. be around them and give them love, and help them navigate through life. Like that's who I really want to be. When I'm, this is wise old woman living her best <laughs> life <laughs> around her grandchildren. Oh, no. Just yeah, in my private, in my private jet. I love it. That's 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 precious. That is beautiful. This great grandma on the beach, just enjoying life. <laughs> I love it. This is why I love this question because the answers are all over the place, but it's always something amazing. And I absolutely love this great grandma. I love it. <laughs> uh, I yeah, absolutely. Now, how can people, you know, reach you, contact you, follow you, and, and you know, if they're interested in the program that you're offering as well, or the other programs that you have, what is the best way to uh, to, to see where you are? Yes, and um, you can find me on Instagram, Rosaline Batu, in one one uh, lowercase, only one word, and and you can send me a DM, SFP, and I will give you more information about the program. Oh, excellent. And I will add that to the comments and in the description of this episode as well, so people can contact you. Thank you so much, Rosalind. I, honestly, I could keep going all day. 
Uh, but thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. That was just beautiful. So much goals that you've given us. And uh, I encourage everybody to, to go on your pages and uh, and see what, what else you because you give such an incredible uh, content. And uh, thank you again for coming on. I really appreciate uh, you uh, agreeing to do this. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. Oh my God, thank you so much. It was such a beautiful conversation. Thank you for your questions. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And yes, I hope this podcast reaches millions and it, you know, changes the minds of millions of women. <laughs> yes, that's what we want to do, right? Just make life easier right. for people and, and not sugarcoat it. Just tell it as, as it is and reach as many people as we can. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And for everybody who is uh, listening and watching, don't forget again to like, follow and subscribe. Make sure that you uh, follow Rosalyn as well and her wonderful work. And uh, until next time, stay safe. Stay awesome and we'll talk soon.